Welcome, friends. This is A Course in Miracles, Palm Beach Study Group. We are on Chapter 8, Section 3, The Holy Encounter, in the text on page 141. Glory to God in the highest, and to you because he has so willed it. Ask and it shall be given you, because it has already been given. Ask for light and learn that you are light. If you want understanding and enlightenment, you will learn it, because your decision to learn it is the decision to listen to the teacher who knows of light and can therefore teach it to you. There is no limit on your learning because there is no limit on your mind. There is no limit on his teaching because he was created to teach. Understanding his function perfectly, he fulfills it perfectly because that is his joy and yours. So my first comment here is that uh, in the book, the pronoun his with a capital H can be used both to uh, signify uh, God the Father, but also to signify the Holy Spirit. And in this paragraph, the capital his does refer to the Holy Spirit. And you know that because it says um, that it, it, it listen to the teacher who knows of light. The teacher is code for Holy Spirit. And um, there is no limit on his teaching because he was created to teach. So again, that indicates Holy Spirit because the he was created by the Father. The Father created the Holy Spirit to indwell our mind at the moment of the separation so that we, his children, would not be lost. So th those are the clues to letting you know that this capital H, he uh, refers to Holy Spirit. So other than that, I mean, what a wonderful, wonderful paragraph this is. Uh, glory to God in the highest and to you, because he so willed it. Now that he is the Father. God created us in his glory and image, and he willed that. And then it says, ask and it shall be given you, because it has already been given. Everything of value that we could possibly ask for in the spiritual realm has already been given to us. We already have it. The Course is trying to teach us how to remember that we have it, how to awaken to the having of all of God's glory and goodness that he created for us which we lost when we thought we could separate ourselves from him and thus created the ego world that we now find ourselves living in. So then it just says, ask for light and learn that you are light. You want to be enlightened? Well, you are enlightened. You just have to remember that. You have to embrace that. And if you want to understand enlightenment, you will learn it. Because, again, we already are. We just are not realizing it in our human mind. Our spiritual mind knows quite well that we are enlightened. So there's no limit to the Holy Spirit's teaching because there's no limit to our spiritual mind. There's no limit to Holy Spirit. And that is his function. Understanding the Holy Spirit's function perfectly, 
he fulfills it perfectly. In other words, the Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. He understands it perfectly. And his joy is ours. Are there any questions, comments? I don't see anyone. So we'll go on to paragraph two. To fulfill the will of God perfectly is the only joy and peace that can be fully known because it is the only function that can be fully experienced. When this is accomplished then, there is no other experience. Yet the wish for other experiences will block its accomplishment because God's will cannot be forced upon you being an experience of total willingness. The Holy Spirit understands how to teach this, but you do not. That is why you need him and why God gave him to you. Only his teaching will release your will to God's, uniting it with his power and glory and establishing them is yours. You share them as God shares them, because this is the natural outcome of their being. So the will of God, people say, well, how do I know what the will of God is? Well, it's very easy. It says right here. The will of God is joy and peace. And that's the only function that can be fully experienced as a spiritual being. And when this is accomplished, there is no other experience because if you accomplish being perfectly in joy and peace, you will no longer be living in the ego world. You will no longer be having an ego experience. You will have totally transformed your mind into the oneness of the Father. So when this is accomplished, there's no other experience. But the wish for other experience will block its accomplishment, and those are the ego wishes. You know, the ego wants all kinds of things that are not of the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit understands this and can teach this to us. That's, that's why we need to listen to what's being taught here in the Course. And that is why we need him, we need the Holy Spirit, and why God gave him, gave the Holy Spirit to us. Only his teaching will release our will to God's will and unite his power and glory and establish them as our own. You share them, we share them as God shares them, because this is the natural outcome of their being, their being perfect joy and peace. Any questions, comments? Yes, David. So if other people are not enjoying peace, um, if they're if we're in spirit, can they can they chase that away if they're in ego? Can they chase it away if, from who? If we're in joy and peace, can other people rattle us so that we're 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 not enjoying peace anymore? Oh well, ego will always try to rattle you. <laughs> so yeah, if you're doing your best to experience joy and peace, there's bound to be things that come along that will rattle you. But again, we have the free will 
to decide how we are going to react to those situations. And that's the important thing, because if we can maintain our joy and peace and not allow ego to rattle us because we will not react in an ego fashion, then we maintain our joy and peace and love and forgiveness. And, um, you know, basically just say to ego, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be tempted by you. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else care to speak? All right, then. So I believe we're on paragraph three. The will of the Father and of the Son are one by their extension. Their extension is the result of their oneness, holding their unity together by extending their joint will. This is perfect creation by the perfectly created in union with the perfect creator. The father must give fatherhood to his son because his own fatherhood must be extended outward. You who belong in God have the holy function of extending his fatherhood by placing no limits upon it. Let the Holy Spirit teach you how to do this, for you can know what it means only of God himself. So the Course teaches us that, that the way that the Father created us is that he extended himself. That's the term that it uses. He extended his love. He extended his will. He extended his peace, his joy. He extended himself. And that is how we were created. And the visual image I'd like to, to give you is, uh, I'm sure you've all seen in, in high school biology a video of the amoeba extending itself, and then it, it finally splits, and that's how it reproduces. Well, that's kind of like the way it is. God extended himself to create us, but we were never separated from God. We we're an extension of God. And so that's why the first sentence says, the will of the Father and of the Son, that's us, are one by their extension, by the Father's extension of his will. The extension is the result of it says their oneness, I'm going to say the Father's oneness, holding their unity together by extending their joint will. It's, it's a joint because it's the Father and the Son. We're an integral part of the process. This is a perfect creation, it's telling us. We were perfectly created, a perfect unity with the perfect creator. And that's how the fatherhood gives fatherhood to his son, because we now have the same attributes as the father. We can extend ourselves to create. But the part of ourselves that we need to extend are our spiritual parts, our love, our joy, our peace, our forgiveness, that's what we need to extend. And we need to extend that outward. 
you who belong in God, because we are in God, because we were never separated from God, because we're an extension of God, and so we are one with God, we have the same fatherhood, and there are no limits upon it. And the Holy Spirit, sentence six says, the Holy Spirit will teach us how to do this. That's why it's so important to turn to Holy Spirit and accept Holy Spirit as your teacher, because that's the Holy Spirit's function. God created Holy Spirit at the moment of separation. That all happened in our mind that we thought we were separated. We weren't separated, but we thought and we felt as though we were separated. That was our own thought, a misthought, an error thought. And Holy Spirit is there to, see, to teach us, no, 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 that, that was just a mistake you made. It's not irrevocable. All you have to do is forget about that, and you'll be back in your right mind. Any questions, comments? David. So this brings to my, my mind about the in Christianity, the Holy Trinity, the Father mm -hmm. is, and, and the Holy Spirit. It's um, it almost jumped off the page at me. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. It is. It, this is the Holy Trinity. That's what it means. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one. There's only one, the triangle. But there's three aspects. That's what the that's what the Trinity is. Okay, Helen, you have your hand up. You're next. Please unmute yourself. So I'm going to break this down to to for me for everyday terms. This is amazing to me. What I've been encountering lately is um, people saying things like, oh, um, you know, you don't feel good. Your illnesses are because of old age. You're getting up there in years. Therefore, you have these illnesses. And I feel so strongly that that puts a, it doesn't allow for extension in that situation it just puts things where where they where nobody you just can't go anywhere oh that's what it is that's the answer you're old it's old age so i i've been trying to i had a conversation the other day uh with the holy spirit and i was saying what a wonderful life i have had there's been a lot of issues in my life. It's been, an, uh, but it's been an amazing, wonderful, and I was having this conversation and I felt I was expanding this feature of being old. Does that make any sense? I, I think I understand what you're saying. Um, let me respond that Whatever you believe is true for you. And so it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It's what you believe. It's how you think about yourself that matters. And so, you know, just like David was saying, uh, other people might blah, blah, blah at you. Well, they can blah, 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 they like. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know who you are. That's the important thing. And how you think about yourself, that's the important thing. And whatever you believe is true is true for you. So I don't know. Does, does, does that address your issue? Um, well, yes. 
I, I can certainly bow out of the conversation when there is any sort of conversation about, um, you know, the aging process. I could certainly, you know, express my feelings about it and then just not be, it, that helps. Thank you. Okay. I'll just say, you know, I mean, again, as long as we're still in the ego world, it's a fact of ego that our bodies are meant to die. And if we're lucky enough to grow old, uh, eventually the, the organs will fail and the body will die because that's the natural state of things in the ego world. The important thing to realize is that we are not our bodies. We are immortal spirits, whole and innocent. That's our true reality. And so I know my body's going to die eventually, and I go, eh, that's okay, because I'm not my body. And I'm, I will never die. The, the, the I am who I am is immortal, is, is spirit, is a son of God. And I, who I am, can never die. So I don't really care about the physical body. I, not that I don't care, take care of it. I, I try to take care of it, although I, I eat too many cookies, but that's, that's a whole other story. <laughs> Anything else, Helen? No, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Does, um, does a miracle want to speak? No, I was just laughing with you, oh, Don, oh. <laughs> at the cookie comment. I didn't know if that was a laugh or a cry, but that's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> David, do you have another comment? Go ahead. What came to my mind is that uh, if we eat God's creation without all, any alteration in the creation, like if we eat processed foods, it, it's not going to feed our body like uh, you know an apple would or a piece of lettuce. Um, we have to take care of our bodies. And the best way is to be one with the food. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's like, you know, there's, there's, there's a fine balance here because, and, and the book does address this. I don't know exactly where, but I know I've read it. Um, that, Yes, it's true that we live in an illusion. Yes, it's true that the body's not real. Yes, it's true that we're not our bodies. Yes, it's true that the body is the, is the ego manifestation. But it's also true that while we're having this experience, we need to be responsible for taking care of our body, for taking care of our neighbor, for taking care. We still have that responsibility. We can't just say to somebody, oh, you're just an ego person. You're going to die anyway. I don't have to do anything for you. No, 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 no. That's, that's not love. You know, the, the way we work out of the ego is to extend our love, is to extend our joy, is to extend our peace. So we do need to be responsible for ourselves and others and help out and take care of and, all of and all of those things because that's the spiritual thing to do. So although we're in the world, we should behave as though we are the spiritual beings that we are while in the world. So yes, it's always best to eat fresh fruits and vegetables, not the processed stuff. <laughs> okay.
Okay, I think we're on paragraph four. When you meet anyone, remember it is a holy encounter. Well, there you go. So that's just what I was saying. When you meet anyone, remember it is a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this, for in him you will find yourself or lose yourself. Whenever two sons of God meet, they are given another chance at salvation. Do not leave anyone without giving salvation to him and receiving it yourself. For I am always there with you in remembrance of you. So this is, you know, like a very, very important paragraph. Um, first of all, that's sentence eight, for I am always there with you. That's I is, is Jesus, whenever uh, he's the one who's giving these words to us. So when he says, for I am always there with you, that's Jesus speaking. Now, one thing about the Course, and some people get hung up on this, is the language. Because the, the, the Course doesn't fool with, with pronouns and nouns in terms of, of gender, okay? There's, in spirit, there's, there's no male or female. Everyone just is. And in the language of the, of the Course, to keep it simple, it's the Son of God, but that means all of us, whether we're experiencing as men or as women, and you and him, uh, when speaking about us, they always use the masculine pronoun, but it does mean everyone, because there's only one of us. So instead of trying to be you know politically correct it just it's already very wordy it it just simplifies it that way so please understand when you're reading this please understand that the women are not excluded okay so when you meet anyone remember it's a holy encounter when you see him or her, you will see yourself. Because again, we're, each one of us is a reflection of the other one of us, because in reality, there's only one of us. And how we treat others, we are treating ourselves. That's why do unto others as you would do unto yourself. What you do unto others, you do unto yourself. What you think of others, you think of yourself. So if you think of someone as a no good, dirty, rotten scoundrel, you're thinking about yourself that way. That's why Jesus said, judge not. Don't put those criticisms, don't put those judgments on other people, because when you do, everybody's a mirror. You're just, you're just putting that back onto yourself. That's, that's not the spiritual way to be. Holy Spirit teaches you that if you look only at yourself, you cannot find yourself. Because that is not what you are. You are not yourself alone. You are more than yourself, you are everybody else. Any questions, comments? Please raise your hand if you like to speak. Okay, then I don't see anybody wanting. Let us move on. 
we're at uh, paragraph five. The goal of the curriculum, regardless of the teacher you choose, is know thyself. There is nothing else to seek. Everyone is looking for himself and for the power and glory he thinks he has lost. Whenever you are with anyone, you have another opportunity to find them. Your power and glory are in him because they are yours. The ego tries to find them in yourself alone because it does not know where to look. The Holy Spirit teaches you that if you look only at yourself, you cannot find yourself because that is not what you are. Whenever you are with a brother, you are learning that you are, you are learning what you are because you are teaching what you are. He will respond either with pain or with joy, depending on which teacher you are following. He will be imprisoned or released according to your decision. And so will you. Never forget your responsibility to him because it is your responsibility to yourself. Give him his place in the kingdom and you will have yours. So when it talks about regardless of which teacher you choose, there's two teachers, there's ego and there's Holy Spirit. Those are the two teachers. You have free will. You're free to choose the ego for a teacher. And plenty of people do. But remember that you're free to choose Holy Spirit as a teacher. And remember that however you look upon the other, you're placing that judgment upon yourself. Any questions, comments? David. So I often say to people, you know, especially the young people, just be yourself. And uh, so it makes a lot of sense to me. I haven't ever thought about it because if you're not yourself, you're an ego. If you're yourself, you're in spirit. I, I never thought deeply until I, you know, until I read that. Well, I'd, I'd qualify that. Be your spiritual self because you can be your ego self. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know... But yes, the, the, the advice should be, be your spiritual self. That's, that's the advice. By being yourself, you're uh, becoming more attractive to people who are also in spirit, who are also to be their spiritual self. Now, remember, we're all teachers and we're all students, and so you know, whatever we, we teach others, we're teaching ourselves. And what, that's the, the, the important thing in this paragraph is that, is that it's reciprocal, that, that no matter what you do or say or think or feel, you're always doing it at, at in a mirror. It's, that's what karma is. Whatever you do will come back on you. So, yes, to teach the young to be their true spiritual selves is the best lesson. Any other comments or questions? All righty, I guess you're all saving them for the end. <laughs> Nobody else? Okay, I don't see anybody. 
If you want to speak and I don't acknowledge you, please just uh, unmute yourselves and jump in. But I'm trying to to realize who wants to speak. We are on paragraph six. The kingdom cannot be found alone. And you who are the kingdom cannot find yourself alone. To achieve the goal of the curriculum then, you cannot listen to the ego, whose purpose is to defeat its own goal. The ego does not know this, because it does not know anything. But you can know it, and you will know it if you are willing to look at what the ego would make of you. This is your responsibility, because once you have really looked at it, you will accept the atonement for yourself. What other choice could you make? Having made this choice, you will understand why you once believed that when you met someone else, you thought he was someone else. And every holy encounter in which you enter fully will teach you this is not so. This is, this is just a very, very important point of, of the whole course is to realize that everyone we meet, that's a holy encounter, and that everyone we meet is ourself. You can't find the kingdom alone. You can't find yourself alone. Any comments, questions? Paragraph seven, you can encounter only part of yourself because you are part of God, who is everything. His power and glory are everywhere and you cannot be excluded from them. The ego teaches that your strength is in you alone. The Holy Spirit teaches that all strength is in God and therefore in you. God wills no one suffer. He does not will anyone to suffer for a wrong decision, including you. That is why he has given you the means for undoing it. Through his power and glory, all your wrong decisions are undone completely, releasing you and your brother from every imprisoning thought any part of the sonship holds. Wrong decisions have no power because they are not true. The imprisonment they seem to produce is no more true than they are. This, this is a very, very important teaching of the Course. The Course teaches that we are innocent. That whatever mistakes we make as ego beings, the Holy Spirit can undo all of that. When we embrace spirit, when we embrace love and forgiveness, all of the errors are undone by Holy Spirit. And we come back into our innocence and leave the ego errors in the past. David. I've been trying to uh, do a lot of this since around the year 2000. And, um, and people, 
people in the ego, ego world, uh, uh, they feel hurt and angry at me. That they, they, they take, they seem to want to take it out on me because I forgive people who are evil and have compassion for them. And uh, they don't seem to understand that it's really a healing that's happening because I uh, forgive and love others that are quote unquote evil. It's a hard, very hard concept uh, for people to grasp. It, it is. And what is your response to those people? We are one. <laughs> I was going to say, you, 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 the, the response is to forgive them like you're forgiving the other people that are perceived as evil. We, we are all brothers and sisters, and I'm in them, they're in me. They're talking about that throughout this right. section. And um, uh, some people warm up to it, but don't embrace it. And other people, they get angry. They feel angry and hurt. Yeah. Even my own, even my own brother. Yeah, you, know, you can just you can just do the best that you can do. You have you have no control over their free will, and you wouldn't want to. You can't will them into being spiritual. You can just teach by example. You can just do the best that you can do. You know, the, the book clearly teaches that everyone, everyone will eventually come back into their spirit mind and that the ego will disappear. But in, in our time-space continuum the, of the existence we're in right now, there's no way that we can see that. What well, Holy Spirit can see that from his point of view, but, but we can't. So all we can do is be vigilant about what, what we can do about our own thoughts and and just do the, the best that we can and some people will get it and and others won't get it this time but they will get it eventually that's the promise that is made everyone will get it eventually uh, you, you said in uh, about three words set the example mm -hmm. that, that that's what i saw as the most important thing that you just said and I keep hearing that message coming from a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I've got to straighten my act up before uh, other people will wake up and straighten out their act. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesus said, take the beam out of your own eye before you're going to criticize the other one. He said, uh, who amongst you is without sin? Then you throw the first stone, you know those kinds of things that that's saying the same thing and and no matter how how well we try we're still in the ego world and you know it's not going to be a hundred percent sometimes I do things that upset people and get them frustrated or angry with me. And uh, sometimes I react in an ego way, but, you know, but I, I try not to, or, and if I do do that, I try to quickly realize that and then forgive the situation, forgive myself, forgive the other person, try to undo the wrong. Like I said, you know, the Holy Spirit will undo all of our errors if we let him. And that's by the process of forgiveness. Any other questions, comments?
All righty then, we have one paragraph left. Paragraph eight, power and glory belong to God alone. So do you. <laughs> God gives whatever belongs to him because he gives of himself and everything belongs to him. Giving of yourself is the function he gave you. Fulfilling it perfectly will let you remember what you have of him. And by this you will remember also what you are, oh, the, what you are in him. You cannot be powerless to do this because this is your power. Glory is God's gift to you because that is what he is. See this glory everywhere to remember what you are. And it says what you are, not who you are. What you, because what you are is a spiritual being. That's what it's saying. It's, it's what you are. You are a spiritual being. You are not an ego body. You're a spiritual being. That's what you are. That's who, you, who your true self is. And all of power and glory belongs to God, and so do you, because God extended himself to create us. We are an extension of the Father. And whatever God gives, he's given to all of us equally. And that's all of himself. Remember also what you are in him, it says. Well, this is the last paragraph of this section, and this is where we will end for tonight. Uh, next week, we will again, section four, the gift of freedom. So now is the time for all of you who uh, wanted to speak or have any last minute questions or comments. And remember, it's not, all, it's not only questions. If you have a question to ask me that you want something clarified, I'll do my best. But if you also have comments about, um, you know, using the, uh, what you learn in this course in, in your personal life, that's, that's fine too. So the, the floor is open. You, you may unmute. I see Linda wants to speak. I just was going to say, I, I think our interpersonal relationships are, is the biggest challenge of this existence. And that's what I love about this book mm. and our discussions, because it just puts all that into perspective, especially when people are being mean and you wonder mm. why me, <laughs> why do I keep encountering these people and they act like this. And it just, uh, just makes it a lot easier. Yeah, when people are mean, that is your opportunity to forgive. That's like, great, be mean to me so I can forgive you. <laughs> right, right. Turn the other cheek, right? Right, yeah. Uh -huh. Give them the other cheek. Um, right. I also find that that having that, you know, going into it with without a state of fear or defensiveness mm -hmm. um, eases the situation in a lot of, you know, if you go in in a positive and forgiving attitude, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's real that it brings a better energy into the encounter. <laughs> yes. Yes. There was a time my mother used to love to pick arguments with me. Okay. Cause I never did it the way she wanted me to do it. Hey, what mother doesn't? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So 
I would always get in these arguments with her until I learned, you know, what, what this was all about. And then I, I realized that, you know what? I have free will and I don't have to argue. So it got to the point where, where mother would blah, 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 and I'd sit there and go, you're right, mom. Well, blah, 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 blah. yeah, okay, I love you, and, and you're right, I agree. Blah, 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 blah. yeah, mom, okay. Blah, blah. Well, there, there was no argument because I stopped arguing. I just refused to argue. That was, and that's, so that's, that's the end of it. You know, if you refuse to argue, then there is no argument. And then that just leaves you to forgive the situation and go on. Anyone else? Does not anyone else have anything to add to our discussion tonight? to our lesson. Uh, David, yes, you? That last paragraph reminded me of, uh, you see in the movies, people go, praise the Lord. And I, I think that's what, what that's all about. You know, giving God the credit and not be, being in the ego. And, and you know, I, I didn't, you know, I love this course because it's all these things you've heard for years, all of a sudden pops in your mind the reason why no one ever teaches you where we're in the course. I, I seem to learn a lot. Right. Uh, Thank you. And Helen, you have your hand up. Helen, you may unmute. Sorry. I have a lot of work to do. Press all these buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so in that example that you have, you gave with the argument with your mother. Um, and so there is no argument because that's the stance you took. Um, however, I wonder, would it, according, I don't, I'm, I'm a little, a little befuddled what this means. So, I have a, when that, is your mother being imprisoned by the arguments that she ensues? And I'm uh, only using your mother in this situation because that was the, the comment. I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, you, you can say that. Yeah, is anybody who's, who's in argument is is imprisoned in their own, in their own ego because otherwise they wouldn't be arguing so and and so the same thing has if you're the one who's arguing you're imprisoned in your ego because you are doing the arguing now, yes. you know, but ar my argu arguing is different from debating. I mean, you know, the argument has an aggression to it. You know, I could have a, a stand on, say, uh, uh, a certain uh, government policy or something, and I could debate my, my stand on it. But that doesn't mean that I have to argue with somebody, start calling them names and getting upset and, and getting uh, aggressive about it, you know. So, again, there's, there's lots of words. You have to define the, the terms. Okay. So, I'm thinking in terms of when I look at people and they say, for example, they complain about about their, the, a complaining person, a habitual complaining person, or um, and about uh, women. I, I, my thoughts aren't really together. I apologize. I'm, I'm going to read this through His power and glory. All your wrong decisions are undone. Okay, so that's me. I'm undoing 
all my wrong decisions by participating in this course and living the best life I can. Um, completely releasing you and your brother from every imprisoning thought. Great. Any part of the sonship holds. Perfect. Um, wrong decisions have no power because they are not true. Okay, perfect. The imprisonment they seem to produce is no more than what they are. Is so, no more true than they are. Right. And so therefore they're not true. So when people are talking out of ego to me and talking about their pain and talking about um, derogatory, I... I, tr I do not indulge. And when the conversation, um, it's my turn to participate in the conversation, I'll try to say something that is um, contributing to the good, trying to get on the level of love. And I'll always do that. I'll always do that um, because I feel that's a form of imprisonment by the the um, by complaining or illness, particularly illness. And so, therefore, when I see that, I want to be able to do my job here on this earth as a teacher to shed or share what the Holy Spirit has given me by saying. Hey, by the way, did you know this? Do you know there's another way? Do you know that this we're here for a different reason? Because those people are suffering from, they're suffering from um, in, being imprisoned. Well, yeah, I, I believe I hear what you're saying. Uh, my thoughts about it are that you know, let him, let him who has ears to hear. It's like some people may not be ready to hear what you're saying and might think that you're being egotistical to try to teach them. And they may not be ready to hear what you're saying. So it's like you kind of have to be I'm careful. Sorry. I, do, I do encounter that a lot. Yeah. yeah. And and I think yeah. you're at absolutely correct, egotistical. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes the best thing, sometimes the best response is no response. Yeah. Sometimes the best response is to stay silent. Right. But there's another way, there's another way to say it. And so I'll, I'll offer this as a suggestion. I never tell anybody that they're wrong. I say, well, I believe, yeah. I think, I feel, yeah. you know, yeah. like we had this conversation the other day and I said, well, you know, I believe that, that Putin is, it just does not realize what he's doing. He's so full of power. And I'm going to choose to send him love and forgiveness. Yeah. Because that's my choice. You can get angry and upset about him or Trump or anybody else that you want to. But I'm, I'm choosing to hold these people in the light and hope that, that they'll realize their spiritual selves and stop acting out in this ego behavior. So I, I talk about me, how I think, how I feel. Right. I don't tell them that they're wrong. I, I agree. I, I think that it works well for me when I use that, but, and I've stopped using that and I have gone to not saying much. And I'm thinking of my sister, one of my sisters, who is, you know, always preaching to me. And so probably the last six months, I will not get into a discussion with her. I will just, oh, okay. 
all right, I see, or something like that. Right. And it's much, it's more beneficial for, for me and I think for her. Because, yeah. you know, I, so anyways, I, I, and, you know, sometimes I do say I believe because I've found that when you say, well, you, they feel like they're being attacked, which they kind of are, you know, <laughs> from when I use the you, I'm more uh, yeah. demonstrative, I think. Right, right. Than yeah. they, I believe, you know. So, yeah. Uh, Re remember that the Course clearly teaches that the, the Father, the Holy Spirit will never um, Im impose their will upon us. They always just sit back and wait for us to go to them. That's, mm -hmm. that's the way it works. So we have to mirror that. We have to not impose our will on other people. We just have to be there for them. If, if they want to learn from us, then we're there to be teachers for them. And if they don't, then we'll just be there to send them love and forgiveness uh, invisibly in our minds and, and, not, and not try to uh, uh, make them believe anything. Right. Uh, I did want to make one last comment then uh, and reg regarding to something that, that you said, Helen, and I don't know if you, uh, I just wanted to clarify this. In paragraph seven, sentence eight, it says, through his power, capital H, meaning Holy Spirit, and glory, all your wrong decisions are undone completely. So the, we do not undo our own wrong decisions. Holy Spirit undoes them for us when we forgive. And it's by the Holy Spirit undoing those wrong decisions that that releases us and our brothers from every imprisoning thought any part of the sonship holds. So it's the Holy Spirit that does the undoing. Just wanted to clarify that. All righty, um, last call. If not, the uh, gin and tonic. Gin and <laughs> So let's let's have a moment of silence please and then we'll stop the recording. <laughs>